first one for us. It says convert each mixed number to a fraction greater than one. I just said that, right? Um, draw a number line to model your work. All right, so the fraction they were given, the mixed number, was 3 and 1 fourth. So they said 3 and 1 fourth is equal to 3 plus 1 fourth. Do you guys agree? Yeah. yeah. And then they said 12 fourths is equal, or 12 fourths plus 1 fourth equals 13 fourths. Yeah. yeah. So think about what you were just doing and think about this. It's the same thing, but going the opposite way, right? Before, we took 13 fourths, and then we broke it into 1 fourth plus 12 fourths. And then we changed the 12 fourths to 3. Then we added that all up. So it's the same idea, just flipped it around. Nothing new. I think you guys will have it easy. So on their number line, to show the number line, their work with the number line, all they did was show this part right here. The 12 fourths plus 1 fourth. Easy? Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and do um, B together. 2 and 4 fifths is equal to what? Look at the example right above if you need to, a little reminder of where to start. Q? 2 plus 4 fifths. I agree. All right. What does 2 equal in a fraction? L? Ten fifths. Why did you choose to make it into fifths? Because that's what the four fifths is. Yeah, we want them to have the same denominator. So she said ten fifths, and then I have to still add four fifths to it. And ten fifths plus four fifths is fourteen fifths. It seems so easy to do it the opposite way now that we know how to do it the other way, right? All right, so let's quickly just show it on a number line. I'm going to start my number line at 0. How much should I end it at? 3, because we know our biggest number is 2, um, two and 4 fifths. So then I'll put, mark my 1, and I'll mark my 2. My first jump, how far do I go? To the 2. 2, and that is how many fifths? 10 fifths. I'm not even going to mark the fifths out in that part because we're going to a whole number. There's really no point of marking out, dashing out all the fifths when we're going to go to a whole number. But for this one, I, I'll need to because we're not going a whole number, are we? How many am I jumping? How many fifths? Four. Four. Yes? All right, let's go ahead and do one more together. We will do C. All right, 3 and 5 eighths. 3 and 5 eighths is equal to what? Break it apart. Tressa? 3 plus 5 eighths. Easy peasy, right? All right, what is 3 equal to with eighths? Abby? 24. Eight, sixteen, twenty-four, right? So we have twenty-four eighths. What do I have to add to it? Five eighths. And now how many eighths do I have? Twenty-nine eighths. So it gets a little trickier when we're dealing with bigger numbers, but we can manage it, I think. All right, so we have twenty-nine eighths. All right. I need to show it on a number line. I need to prove it. Start my number line at... Okay, how much did I end it at? Why four? Austin? Because it's three. Yeah, because the, the next whole number was four. Yep, because that's three and five eighths. All right, and then I'll mark my one, my two, and my three. All right, my first jump is going to be what? Jacob? To three. And how many eighths is that? 24 eighths. All right, what do I need to do next? Maya? Oh, yeah. Okay, perfect. Let's talk about it. 
24 eighths. Where did we get that from? Before, before we talk about the 24 part, how do we know that we needed eighths? That's a, this is a really good question. Brendan, how do we know we need eighths? Well, because um, we have to add five eighths to the Yeah, so we know we have three and five eighths. So we have to add whatever this fraction is to eighths. Can we add bananas and oranges? No. 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 Can we add fifths and sixths? No. No, we have to add the same denominator. So we need eighths, right? Okay, so how do we figure out how many eighths there are in three holes? How many eighths are there in one hole? Eight. Sixteen. How many would there be in two holes? Sixteen. How many would there be in three holes? Twenty-four. So twenty-four eighths is the same as three. And then scooching back up to this one, we have to figure out how many um, fifths because that's what we have right here, are in two. So in one hole, there would be five fifths. And in two holes, there would be ten fifths. What if we had five as our whole number? How many fifths would we have if we had five holes? Tyler? Yeah, we'd have five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. I have five holes now, right? Yes? I just got something. All right, come over here and I'll give you an envelope. Does that make sense, honey? Yeah? Okay. Was anyone else a little bit confused on that? Are we good? Give me thumbs on your heart. Show me how you're feeling based on that. Okay, if we're still sideways, that's all right. All right, let's keep going through this. Oh, we, we didn't finish this one. So we moved 24 eighths. How many, what do I need to do next? I know I need to move some more, but how do I move? Jake, um, Josiah? Okay, show the eighths. I agree. One, two, three, Bye, have a good day. I, I showed my eighths. Now what? Abby? I jump five. One, two, three, four, five. So this is proving, guys, that 24 eighths plus five eighths equals three and five eighths. Right? So we're proving with this number line that these two things are equal. Yes? Okay. Let's um let's skip to the back for right now. Um, we'll look at these other ones later. All right, number two says convert each mixed number to a fraction greater than one. Same idea as on the front. Show your work as in the example below, or as in the example. Note three times four fourths equals three times four over four. So, well, let's look at this one right here really quick. So three and three-fourths. They started out with the fraction. Then they broke it up into the whole right here and the pieces. Do you see that? Are we good with this part right here? Yeah. Yeah, easy, right? And then they said, this is where it gets a little tricky. They said three times four-fourths in parentheses. So that's where they're trying to figure out how many, what this looks like as a fraction. Because they still have the adding three-fourths right here. Yes? Okay. So then, when we get to the next part right here, they said that three times four is... Three times four is twelve. So now we have twelve-fourths plus three-fourths, and that equals fifteen-fourths. Okay, let's go ahead and go to B and try this one. So go ahead and write, we're going to start with our fraction. We have four and one third. How can I split this up into easier pieces to work with? Devin? Four plus one third. Okay, we're going to break it up to four plus one third. How do I figure out this next part with the parentheses here? 
I know I have four holes, so I'm going to start with that. And how many thirds do I need to make one hole, Abby? Three. Three. So I'm going to multiply this by what? Three thirds. Three thirds is the same as what number? One. So I'll put that in parentheses, but I still have to add what to it? One third. My one third. So what is 4 times 3? 12. 12. So now I have how many thirds? 12 thirds. 12 thirds plus? 15. Not plus, one. plus 1 third. Yep. Yeah. And 12 thirds plus 1 third is? 13, 13 thirds. Mm -hmm. OK, put your thumb on your heart and show me how you're feeling right now. OK, good. I see mostly sideways thumbs are up thumbs, so that's good to me. Okay, let's go ahead and do C, and then we'll go to the last box, okay? All right, we have four and three-fifths. Start with what they give you. They give us the fraction, right? Okay, how can we break this up without even thinking about it, really? Max? Yep, so we take the four, and we separate it from the... Three fifths. You got it. All right. So now is the tricky part with those parentheses. Start with what they give you. We know how many holes we have. How many holes do we have? Four. Okay. What fraction do we have to look at? Um, Matt? Five fifths, yep. Because we know we have holes and we need the, them to be in fifths. But we can't forget to add our three fifths on. What is four times five? Okay, hold on. Before you before you shout out, listen to my question. Don't look at your paper. Listen to my question. What is four times five? Twenty. So how many fifths should we have? Twenty fifths. When I ask you guys those questions, a lot of you guys just shout the, what, you're think, what you're looking at on your paper. But what I want you to do is stop what you're doing when I ask those kinds of questions and think about what I'm asking, because I think a lot of you are confusing, making this more confusing than it has to be, okay? So just think about that question. Why did I ask you what four times five was? Where did I come up with that question? Q? Um, in the first yeah. We had four holes, and we were multiplying it by five-fifths. So I multiplied it by the five. You got it. All right, so 20 fifths plus three-fifths is? 23 fifths. You got it. All right, at the bottom here, same idea, just in little boxes. Convert each mixed number to a fraction greater than one. All right, so for this, you could really do it any way you wanted. I'm going to show you the way that I like to do it, which is kind of... Kind of like this, but I'll show you. So my first one is two and three fourths. I do like when they do um, that this is equal to two plus three fourths. Because like I always tell you guys, I like to start with what they give me. I don't like to make it harder than it has to be. So now I have two and I have three fourths. But that two is not going to work, is it? What denominator does my two need to have at the bottom? Fourths. So how can I show two using fourths? What if I only had one? How many fourths would I need? Four fourths. So if I have two, I need eight fourths. So I'm going to say this is equal to eight fourths plus three fourths. And eight fourths plus three fourths is? 11 fourths. So I'm kind of doing what I did up here with the multiplication, but I'm just not showing it. I'm just showing what they're equal to. Yes? Do you have to do it that way? Nope. You do not need to. Nope. Whatever way you are more comfortable with is the way you can answer these. Because it doesn't ask you to do it in a certain way. Yes, Brendan? If you have to show something, that needs to be Yeah, you need to show me some work. Yeah. So I could have just wrote 11 fourths. That wouldn't have been enough work. Great. Great call, Brendan. 
Okay, so show me, you can show me on a number line. You can show me using parentheses. You can show me, um, well, doing just like what we just did. Because what I just did is the same as on the front without the number line. Okay. All right, let's go ahead and skip to E and 3 and 1 tenth. I'm going to start with what I know, which is 3 plus 1 tenth. All right, so I need to get my threes into a fraction. How do I do that with a number this big? Tyler? Yeah, and 10 times 3 is 30. So I have 30 tenths, right? And 30 tenths plus equals what? 31 tenths. Okay, we're going to do one more, and then I'm going to let you work by yourself, okay? Stick with me for the last one, though. All right, G, 5 and 2 thirds. Start with what they give you. So we have 5 and 5 and 2 thirds. Okay, that 5 needs to become a fraction. My denominator will be what? 3. 3. So how do I figure out how to get there? David? Um, why you break up the Okay. All right, so 15 thirds plus 2 thirds. So he got the 15 thirds. All he did was multiply 5 times 3, right? Because we know that a whole is 3 thirds, and if we have 5 thirds, or 5 wholes, we can just multiply 5 times 3, or you could count. You could say 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. All works the same. Okay, so 15 thirds plus 2 thirds is 17 thirds. All right, great. I'm glad you feel that way. What I would like you guys to do right now is to go back and finish the problems that we didn't do. Please make sure that you, you may do it any way that you would like, especially on this part, but please make sure you show your work.